Sailor Moon, an anime long regarded as a feminist triumph and supporter of LGBT acceptance, is actually a tool of the patriarchy. Welcome back to Otaku Daikun. I am so angry. The other day, I decided to go back and watch one of my favorite childhood anime, Sailor Moon. Back then, I was just a dumb kid and thought that show was teaching me to find women as fun and exciting superheroes. But just like all media older than the last five years, it was secretly normalizing my acceptance of the established patriarchy. I'm not even going to start with the old dub. How dare they make lesbians out to be cousins? Actually, that was pretty stupid, but... Anyway, if you sit down and judge Sailor Moon with today's superior moral values, you'll notice just how problematic and hurtful Sailor Moon's approach to relationships really is. Now, Kotakeuchi, the comic artist who made the story, is a cis woman. You might find that empowering, but no, she wasn't a feminist. Rather, she was the victim of internalized misogyny. She's not on our side, because years of cultural oppression clouded her judgment, effectively forcing her to write these problematic stories. Seriously, it's like the alt-right tied her to a chair and made her write books at gunpoint. Wait, what's that? You like Sailor Moon? Well, you're a bigot and an enabler. I should ban you for having the audacity to dismiss legitimate concerns of pedophilia and sexism. Proof? You want proof? Here, look at Usagi, our story's supposed hero. In the show's first season, she's 14 years old. 14! She's in middle school. A child! I can't believe anyone in their right mind would put a toddler like that in such a slutty uniform. Sometimes when she raises her arm, I see her stomach. Just imagine all the degenerates watching the show, learning to fetishize kids from this. Why wouldn't they? After all, they have an iconic male character to copy. Usagi's boyfriend is Mamoru, or Tuxedo Mask. He's the greatest pedophile of them all, because he's in college. The show tries to mask its perversion behind the fact that they're destined lovers in a previous life, but all I see is debauchery. Even though we see Mamoru constantly remind Usagi to care more about her studies, it's really just negging. Huh? You're trying to tell me they only kiss? Only kiss? Someone needs to invent a chastity belt for her face. Women shouldn't be kissing until they're at least 40. It's disgusting to think they even hug. Why? You know why. He's clearly grooming her. Even if we gave him the benefit of the doubt, and they don't fornicate until she's of age, you just know he's doing everything in his power to prep her for that promised day. He belittles her intelligence, calling her bunhead, and every time she's about to save the day, he butts in and steals her glory. See how he always uses a rose? It's because he wants to deflower an innocent child! He always throws it to deprive Usagi of her heroic fame, to remind her that she can't possibly win without a man's help. She never needs help. There's nothing to protect her from. He's not chivalrous. He's a predatory misogynist. It's clear the author was brainwashed into thinking that there's any merit to the damsel in distress trope. My esteemed colleague Anita Sarkeesian told me in her thoroughly researched video series, damsels in distress are just a lazy way to make men in a story look better by reducing women to being acted upon as objects. Usagi's not a ball to be played with. She's a woman. What's that? You say Mamoru actually dies trying to save her? Do you really want to give the benefit of the doubt to a homophobe? That's right. Mamoru's also a homophobe. In the first movie, Mamoru rejects the advances of his gay childhood friend. His character single-handedly denied the series its first theatrical gay representation. Hm. Speaking of representation, of course they had to make all the show's trans characters bad guys. That's a negative stereotype that media just loves to perpetuate. The show is obviously trying to say that girls with dicks are evil. Are they actually trans? Well, duh, because I said so. How dare you try to straightwash my headcanon? In fact, from now on, Sailor Jupiter's is trans too. She's not a tomboy, you transphobe. The Sailor Scouts aren't really friends. They've been misgendering Jupiter this whole time, and she just puts up with it because she's afraid to come out. Oh, and let's not forget how the show normalizes Loli and bestiality. Mamoru's grooming eventually succeeds, and Usagi has a child, in the future anyway. That kid, Chibi Usa, goes back in time, Terminator style, to make Usagi and Mamoru an inevitable ship. I can't even. Later on, this tiny girl starts getting aroused by a Pegasus. Ew, ew, ew! 
This is serious, you guys. People aren't smart enough to realize this is just a cartoon. I'm sure not. It turns viewers into predators. Thank God I have communities that I can vomit this to and have the exact same perspectives regurgitated back at me. Otherwise, I might have to go out and actually do something like protest human trafficking. No way. I'd rather spend my finite lifespan dedicated to shaming all the creepy, horrific cis white men who look at those sailor transformations with eyes of predatory lust. In fact, I won't stop until every trace of this show is wiped from the internet. Let's start a hashtag, the moon is not a planet, and threaten Viz until they drop the show or censor it so that Mamoru never shows up, the girls instantly transform, everyone wears spats, Ray is black, and Jupiter is voiced by Crispin Freeman. It's just like how Deke changed the show, but this time all the changes will fit my agenda. Viz, just hire me and you'll never be bigoted again. Hey, so anyone watching this at any other time of the year? Today just so happens to be April Fools! I say that, but there are definitely plenty of fools out there who use pathetic arguments like this to impose cancel culture on anime that are undeservedly attacked because fools can't seem to understand that fiction is fiction. If you try hard enough, literally anything can offend you. But it takes a lot more effort and integrity to respect artistic freedoms and focus on the real criminals in our world. If you agree with me, please spread the hashtag waifu for laifu, which is a charity livestream I'm currently planning. It's all about embracing lewd anime games while raising money for a tangible, real-world problem. If you have any favorite content creators who you'd like to see join this endeavor, let them know. The bigger the names, the more support we can bring to this great cause. Thanks for watching! If you enjoy this channel, help me beat the algorithm by liking, commenting, and sharing the video, subscribing to Otaku Daikun, and, most of all, smashing that notification bell so you don't miss out on all of my anime discussion, lore, or Let's Play content. If you want to support me directly, there are now three ways that all provide the same benefits. You can click Join here on YouTube, or join Patreon or Subscribestar for access to exclusive vids and early access. As always, celebrate your fandom!